Hi guys, my name is Pratik and welcome to your very own YouTube channel. On this channel, we are starting this new series where every weekend we'll bring to you the business news, the business updates for the entire week. Yes, guys, we'll bring to you the most fascinating, most happening and most interesting business news from India and around the globe. So watch this full video and stay tuned on this channel so that you don't miss any of the wonderful stuff that we're going to bring in future on this series on our channel. The first business update for today is Microsoft has finally decided to discontinue the Internet Explorer, its most unpopular product across the globe. Microsoft said in its blog post on Wednesday that the future of Internet Explorer on Windows 10 will be the Microsoft Edge. Microsoft also said that the websites that are hosted on and are based on Internet Explorer will continue to work till 2029 on Microsoft Edge which means the businesses and people across the globe will have enough time to upgrade their website so that they are now based on other browsers rather than Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer has been around for over 25 years and recently it has been criticized a lot and even ridiculed by many people for its slowness of speed and lack of security features compared to the other websites, say the Google Chrome or the Apple Safari. We feel this was the right move by the software giant and it was already making preparations for it for almost a year. In the August of 2020, Microsoft had announced that 365 of its applications, including the Microsoft Office, will stop working on the Internet Explorer by the mid-summer of 2021. The Internet Explorer has come a long way down from its prime years. In the 1996 and 97, it had won the browser battle against the erstwhile market champion, the Netscape Navigator. From there, it peaked in 2002 and 2003. Around that time, it had 95% of usage share around the world. Then it started declining slowly, when in 2012, it was finally replaced by the Google Chrome as the most widely used browser across the world. Explorer, you will be solely missed, but probably this was the right time to call it a night. In the next news, we have the Apple CEO, Tim Cook, who is going to appear in the court as a witness to defend his company against the charges of illegal monopoly by the Apple App Store. The antitrust charges were made by the makers of the popular video game, the Fortnite, the Epic Games. The Epic Games have alleged that the Apple App Store or the iPhone App Store provides safe haven to the iPhone and iPad applications while keeping the competition out. The App Store is the, is the major revenue generator for Apple, which helped it clock a profit of $57 billion in the last fiscal. The Apple's defense was that it provides a fair platform for all, all applications and all the application makers to make money in return of their innovation and security features, which benefits not just the application users, but also the developers. Now, what I feel over the whole case is, I feel the Apple bias may be a real thing because I have also experienced it as the user of some of his products in the past. But I also feel that the Apple may actually have the right to do so. Apple spends so much money on its research, innovation and development. Its yearly profit is more than multiple times more than many of its uh, competitors net worths. So Apple may probably have the right to protect and to defend its genuine innovators as and when it feels necessary. Moving on, the State Bank of India also announced its January to March quarter's profits and it has shown a sharp 80% jump compared to the same quarter last year. This quarter, the profits were 6,451 crores compared to 3,581 crores in the same quarter last year. And this jump has been attributed to the reduction of non-performing assets. The bank's gross NPA came down to 4.98% compared to 6.15% in the same quarter last year. And the India's largest lender is also very hopeful of the upcoming months because it has shown improvements in some other asset quality ratios as well. The most important ratio, the net NPA, has come down below 5% for the first time in past five years. This news also had a direct positive impact on the share prices of SPI. The shares jumped 5% within some time of the announcement of the news. And we are hoping further increase, guys, this is not a financial advice, but we are hoping that it will show further increase in the upcoming months, but not a financial advice. Another factor that has gone in favor of SPI is that its CASA ratio has jumped up to 17%. 
Now, what is CASA ratio? We cannot explain right now in details, but just to understand it simply, it stands for the current accounts and savings accounts ratio, which is it is just the percentage of a bank's total deposits that is sitting in the current accounts and the savings accounts. Now, having a high CASA ratio is always good for a bank because any bank pays the lowest rate of interest to its depositors in current accounts and savings accounts. You also might have noticed that even your bank pays you very little interest on current accounts and savings accounts, like 2% or 3% or maximum 4 or 5%, but not more than that. So CASA is like a very cheap source of capital for a bank, which it has got for a very low interest rate. And this they can lend to other businesses or invest in other businesses and make a higher rate of return, thus potential to make a lot of profit. Thus, higher the CASA ratio, higher the potential for a bank or any lending institution to make profits. Our next news is regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. The WHO chief Tedros Adhanom has said that once the currently ongoing second wave of COVID-19 in India subsides, the, the Serum Institute of India should also catch up to its commitments to the COVAX. COVAX is a global equity scheme by WHO which aims to provide equitable vaccines to across the globe. It is an effort to make sure that people in all corners of the world get the COVID-19 vaccine irrespective of their social or financial class. India, which as we know is currently going through the world's deadliest COVID-19 wave, also happens to be the hub of global vaccine manufacturing. And because of the current unfortunate situation, over 140 million doses of the vaccines which was meant to be distributed in the low and middle income countries could not be accessed by COVAX. And another 50 million doses is expected to be missed in the month of June. I feel the Serum Institute of India is in troubled waters here. On one hand, the Indian government is running a program to vaccinate all its citizens above 18 years, while there are no clear timelines of by when it will be able to do that. And on the other hand, the vaccine producers are themselves facing fund shortage, so they are facing difficulty in honoring their in-country commitment. Whether the Serum Institute of India will be able to honor its global commitment or not, only time will tell. So guys, that's all we have in this episode of Weekly Business Updates. We'll be back again next week with the new updates of the new week. So stay tuned in this, in this series so that you don't miss any of the important business updates around the globe. And if you like this video, give it a like so that it reaches more and more people looking for such a content and also subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of the interesting, fascinating, wonderful stuff that we share around here in the future. Thanks a lot for watching.